Uh, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> so today we are talking about uh, section, let's see. We're not on 5.4, are we? Let's see, are we on working with integrals? Three sixty-four. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh, the definite integrals. Okay, perfect. All right. What can I answer for you? Uh, what questions do you have? asked any question so just waiting questions anybody online have a question is there some people online hopefully the section was that easy yeah um, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to do problems if people don't have questions on it and they haven't tried it yet, so. Right. I'm guessing somebody has a question. Oh, here we go. Okay, so somebody said number 53. All right. So uh, number 53, we have properties of integrals and we get some things given to us. So 53, we have um, that the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x is 2. 0 to 3 of f of x equals 2. We also get that the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x um, does, oh, they say dx, right? dx equals 2 integral <clears throat> from 3 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to negative 5. And we also have the integral from 3 to 6 of g of x is 1. Okay. And so then they want us to evaluate some things. First of all, a... They say, what's the integral from 0 to 3 of 5 f of x dx? Okay, so on this one, um, since 5 is a constant and has no x's involved and it's multiplied by everything, we can just pull the 5 outside of the integral. So we could just write this as 5 integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx. But we know what this integral is. We're told that that's all just equal to 2. So this just equals 5 times 2, or 10. Okay. <clears throat> For b, we have the integral from 3 to 6 of negative 3g of x dx. Okay. Integral. 3 to 6 of negative 3 g of x dx. Similar, uh, we just have a constant times the g of x, so the constant negative 3 could be pulled outside of the integral. And I could write this as negative 3 integral from 3 to 6 of g of x dx. And we know what that one is. The integral from 3 to 6 of g of x dx is 1. So this is just negative 3 times 1, or just minus 3. Okay? 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. We have integral C. We have the integral from 3 to 6 of 3f of x uh, minus g of x, whole thing, dx. Okay, so the first thing that we know is that if we add or subtract two functions together, we can break them up into their own separate integrals. So I could write this as the integral from 3 to 6 of 3 f of x of dx minus the integral from 3 to 6 of g of x of dx. But each of these individually, I know how to do. But this one, I could just pull the 3 out of the integral. Uh, and so this one would be 3 integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx. And then minus this guy. But this one we know that's just 1. So just minus 1. And the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx, we know it's minus 5. So this is just 3 times minus 5 minus 1. Or in other words, minus 15 minus 1 minus 16. Make sense? And then for the last one, we have uh, part D, but part D is very, very similar to part C. So I'll just let you do part D. Yeah. What's up? Oh, on part D? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on part D, yeah, it goes from 6 to 3 instead of from 3 to 6. So you have to flip, and that means you're going to get a negative. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is there, uh, on 51D, is there a correct notation for when you can't do this and you can't complete the problem? Oh, let me see. It says... Or is, do we just... There's only the fact that that and the definition of if possible. Yeah, so you don't know, let's see, only the fact that that, yeah, I guess that uh, without doing some sort of more work, I, I think you'd say just not possible. Yeah, yeah, for that one. Other questions? Yes. Um, 55. 55. Okay. So 55 is kind of similar, huh? Gives you a bunch of stuff. Okay. So 55, we get uh, integral from 1 to 6 of f of x dx is 10. 1 to 6 of f of x dx is 10. We get the integral from 1 to 6 of g of x dx is 5. Okay. We get integral from 4 to 6 of f of x is 5. 4 to 6 of f of x dx is 5. Oh, wait. I think I messed up. First one's 10. Second one's 5. This one is five, okay. And then the last one is that the integral from one to four of g of x is equal to two. Okay, and then they want us to evaluate some things. So A, we have the integral from one to four three f of x dx. Okay, um, uh, very good. 
so they're going to make you be sort of clever here. So on this one, certainly we could pull out the three, right? So we can write it as three times the integral from one to four of f of x dx. But that's not one of the things they give you up here. But in some ways, um, let's see, what do they give you? You know how much area there is from one to six, and you know how much area there is from four to five. So from one to four, uh, so in some ways we could say it's this, that this is three times uh, the integral from one to six of f of x dx minus the integral from four to six of f of x dx. Because in some sense, what I'm saying here is take all the area from one to six and subtract out the area uh, from four to six. And what you would you be left with? The area from one to four, right? So, and that's what we want. So this would be equal to three times. This one I know it's 10. This one I know um, it is five. So we get three times five or 15. Let me see what I'm doing over there. Sure, pretty close. There we go. Okay, does that one make sense? Okay. Was there a particular one that you didn't like very much? Or maybe just all of them? Um, didn't get e. e? Okay, let's look at that one. Okay, so part B e on that one. We've got integral from 4 to 6 of 8g of x dx. Integral, so this is E, 4 to 6 of, was it 8? Yes. 8g of x dx. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Do we What do we have over here? We have g of x from 1 to 6. And we have g of x from 1 to 4. We need g of x from 4 to 6. So I su suppose from 4 to 6 is from 1 to 6 minus from 1 to 4. Right? So uh, we could write this as, well, of course, I could pull the 8 out. So let's do that first. So I get 8 integral from 4 to 6 of g of x dx. And then how I could write this is this is 8 times the integral from, instead of going from 4 to 6, we could go from 1 to 6 of g of x dx. And then I could subtract out the integral from 1 to 4 of g of x dx. And that should leave me with the integral from 4 to 6, which is what I want. So now we can plug in what we know. Hopefully we know these things. So we know g of x from 1 to 6 is 5. So this is 8 times 5. And then minus integral from 1 to 4 of g of x is 2. So minus 2. So this is 8 times 3. 24. Sound good? Other questions? Questions? Anybody online have a question? Oh, yeah. 47. 47? Sure. 
Okay, 47. Yeah, so you're using that graph to find something, right? Okay. So 47. We have the graph in the book, and what they're asking us for is use that graph to calculate the integral from 0 to pi of x sine x dx. Okay, so let's see. So they're saying the integral from 0 to pi. And... Um, you're kind of given a graph, right? It looks sort of like this. That kind of goes up, way down, and then back up. And they say that this point is pi. And this is the function. And then they also give you some regions in which they give you the area. Like they say that inside this little piece of area, there's one area. Here, there's pi minus one area. Then they say here, there's pi plus one. And here there's two pi minus one. Correct. Okay, so what they're saying is, okay, if you know all that stuff, then how much area is there between zero and pi under this curve? Well, you know that from zero to pi, is all that area, right? And so what you know is it's, well, it's this piece plus this piece. So it's one plus pi minus one. So it's just, in this case, pi, just the pi minus one plus one. Does that make sense? So we don't put it in zero. Yeah, you don't have to plug anything in here because what you're all they're asking for you is like interpret the graph to see what those are. And really what they're trying to say is, do you understand that this means the area under this curve between zero and pi? So you go over here and you say, okay, here's zero, here's pi. How much area is there under the curve? And they say in this little region right here, there's one. And in this region right here, there's pi minus one. So just add those two together for the area under that curve between zero and pi, and you get pi. Does that make sense? So like, did I assign any others on that graph? Or was that it? 49. 49? Yeah, so then they ask, what is it from zero to two pi? So instead of zero to pi, I'm going from here to here. But what happens with this stuff? This these two pieces of area. Negative area. Yeah, yeah, it's negative area, not positive area. So if I were going instead of from zero to pi, if I were going from zero to two pi of this function, then I would add these two. So one plus pi minus one. And then I'd subtract these two. So I'd subtract pi plus one and then I subtract the two pi minus one. Because these are gonna count as they're above the x-axis, so they count as positive area. These two are below the x-axis, so they're gonna count as negative area. That makes sense. And that's it. I guess I could add that up. Other questions? Okay, well, uh, if no other questions, and I didn't, don't see any others online either, uh, that's all for today. By the way, update on your exams. There's one person who still hasn't taken the exam, and so it's kind of, uh, just for various reasons. And so they're taking it and I believe I'll have exams back to you on Monday then. So um, other than that, have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday.
The next assignment is assigned.